Hi, this is Yasas Fitsu and Manos Perlakis, presenting case 123 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that builds on previous cases on how to perform troubleshooting of the DK crash technique. The patient had previous coronary bypass graft surgery with Lima to LAD, vein graft to obtuse marginal branch, as well as vein graft to PDA, and then presented with unstable angina. He did have a previous nuclear stress test with inferior ischemia and underwent coronary angiography that demonstrated patent Lima to LAD, patent vein graft to M, there was disease in the native left main, and then there was a significant lesion in the mid right coronary artery. However, with a patent vein graft to the PDA, causing tenting of the vessel, there appear to be lesions both distal and proximal to the vein graft touchdown that we consider as potential culprits for the patient's symptoms. However, when we performed physiologic assessment, the DPR in the posterior lateral was 0.98 and the TPR on the PDA was 0.92. Therefore, we decided to not perform an intervention. Unfortunately, the patient had recurrent chest discomfort the following day and was sent back to the cath lab. And uh, once again, in geography demonstrates this suspicious area, distal and proximal to the saphenous vein graft touchdown. And given the recurrent symptom, uh, patient's uh, symptoms, we decided to proceed with PCI of the native coronary artery, also because it would be very hard to stand from the vein graft both uh, retrograde and undergrade into the PDA, we decided to do the DK crash technique, stem the native coronary, and perform the DK crash technique for the posterior lateral PDA bifurcation. However, it was quite challenging to get into the PDA because the vessel was tented, as we saw previously, from the saphenous vein graft. So we advanced a guide wire in the posterior lateral, but then had a lot of difficulty getting a wire into the PDA. So when this problem happens, one option is uh, to use a microcatheter. Another one is to use a polymer jacketed wire. Another one is to use the hairpin technique or reversed guide wire technique in which a hairpin is formed usually on a polymer jacketed wire like a filter FC or a C on black. And that can happen through the, two, the dual lumen microcatheter. This is advanced all the way past the origin of the target vessel and then when the wire is pulled back it unfolds and enters into the PDA. But unfortunately this did not work in this particular case. We had difficulty manipulating equipment that is why we dilated the mid right coronary artery. And then we did uh, repeat attempts and uh, we can here appreciate well what was the problem. The undergrade wire actually here is entering into a side branch of the distal RCA and this is the origin of the PDA with this retroflex angle because of the tenting from the saphenous vein graft. So to overcome this difficulty we ended up using a microcatheter, we used the caravel together with a Sion black polymer jacketed guide wire that eventually we were able to advance into the PDA and then it went retrograde into the saphenous vein graft. So when this happened, we advanced the caravel further down into the PDA and then we pulled back uh, the guide wire and then uh, slowly uh, tried to rewire while removing, while withdrawing the caravel and eventually by doing that we were able to advance undergrade into the PDA. So now we do have wires in both vessels. We of course replaced the Sion Black for a workhorse guide wire before performing the different steps of standing. The next step was to perform imaging to size our vessel and determine the need for performing atherectomy as patients who have coronary bypass often have significant calcification but what was found is that uh, there were areas of calcification but no circumferential calcification throughout the vessel so we decided to actually not uh, perform atherectomy prophylactically in this space. The same was done distally, showing calcification, but once again it was not circumferential. So we wired both vessels and then predilated both vessels. And now we are ready to start with standing. We had to decide which was going to be the main vessel and which one was going to be the side branch. And uh, because of the 
difficulties that we had with wiring the PDA, we decided to first stand into the PDA, which would straighten the vessel and would make subsequent rewiring attempts easier. So we did place a 225 by 22 millimeter drag eluting stents in the PDA, slightly protruding back in the distal right coronary artery. So we have um, the 17 steps of DK crush, starting with um, ballooning, delivering the side branch stand, then deploying the side branch stand and removing the side branch balloon. Before crushing the stand that we place in the side branch, it is important to confirm that the stand is adequately expanded. So in this case, we took a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon and uh, post dilated the stand to make sure that it's optimally expanded. We still have the balloon into the main vessel to be able to crush this stand once we achieve an optimal result. And after doing that, uh, we performed crushing followed by rewiring of the side branch through a proximal strut and then did uh, the first kissing balloon inflation. However, we did have difficulty advancing the balloon into the posterior lateral having to use a 1.0 millimeter subfire pro balloon and then we upsized that to a 2.0 millimeter balloon in the PDA and then 3.0 millimeter in the posterior lateral. Still expansion does not seem to be optimal so we did uh, more balloon inflations. And this is the algorithm of what to do if we have difficulty crossing into the side branch with balloons or stands. The first step is to try smaller balloons like the Subfire Pro we used in this case. Another option is to pass a microcatheter like a Corsair or a Turnpike. The other one is to increase the support, for example, with anchoring techniques or with a guide extension. Actually, bifurcation is well suited for anchoring because we already have a wire into both branches and we can use an anchor balloon in the main vessel to advance equipment into the side branch and then we're going to stand that main vessel anyway. Another option is to use a wiggle wire, if possible, that might help with navigating through the stand struts. And in our case, it's not possible to do a therectomy because we already have placed stents. So after we got a nice result into the PDA, which was the side branch, the next step is to stand into the main vessel. So we do have a stand that is protruding at least 8 millimeters back from the bifurcation from the carina to allow for the proximal optimization technique. In this case, we did not choose optimally the length and we have a, a small area of uncovered lesion distally. So we de deployed that stand and then uh, before doing other steps, we placed an additional short stand covering the distal lesion into the right posterior lateral vessel. Then the steps are repeated. We rewired from a distal stand strut this time. This was once again the Sion Black. We once again had difficulty with advancing a balloon into the side branch and that's why we used an anchor balloon in the posterior lateral. We inflated this balloon into the posterior lateral and that um, provided some help with crossing with a balloon into the PDA. And then after doing that we did the kiss again. It is a two-step kiss so high pressure inflation first into the side branch followed by simultaneous inflation at lower pressures. Usually 20 to 24 atmospheres is the high pressure, followed by about 12 atmospheres simultaneously for the main vessel and the side branch. And then it is important to assess and ensure we have a nice result. So in this case, um, we performed optical coherence tomography. And we can see that distally the result looks okay. We're coming back from the PDA, so this is the saphenous vein graft touchdown. The saphenous vein graft has been jailed. And then we're coming now into the distal right coronary artery. That looks okay here. However, we can see here a major problem. We have under expansion of the stand we placed in the distal RCA. And this is the crushed stand, which actually has not been crushed very well. So there's still work to be done. You can actually see on the longitudinal view that this area appears red because we have significant stent malaposition. And once again, we do have the stent not being well crushed. We need to come with a bigger balloon and crush the stent. So we did use um, a larger balloon and we did uh, high pressure inflation in the distal RCA. 
Then we stand it all the way to the ostium of the nat native right coronary artery. And then did uh, again a OCT that um, this time uh, we're coming from the posterior lateral, which is um, well covered with a stent. And then we're coming back and then more proximally, we have areas once again of stent under expansion. And then we have some stent overlap and then again some areas of under expansion higher up. And that is why additional postulations were done. And uh, at the end, we did have a nice result. We can see the areas of red are minimal now on the final image. And uh, we were able to expand the stand well. There is still mild malaposition, but for the most part, we have a nice result with a good stand expansion and stand strut position all the way to the ostium of the native right coronary artery. And this was the final geographic result. We still have a pretty brisk competitive flow from the vein graft. Sometimes we coil those grafts to minimize the risk of stent thrombosis in the native vessel, but we decided to not do this in this particular case. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that in cases of SVG failure, here there were lesions proximally distal to the vein graft that's down. Sometimes opening the native coronary artery is preferred if technically feasible. We saw that wiring through the tortuosity was challenging. However, by uh, using various techniques, specifically a microcatheter and a polymer jacketed wire, we were able to get the wire into the PDA. We saw several challenges of the DK crash technique, including rewiring and advancing equipment that were overcome using small balloons as well as the side branch anchoring technique. We also saw that imaging with OCT in this case, helped optimize the result and achieve good stent expansion and stent strut apposition. So several layers of complexity, but a nice final result. The patient actually did well without any recurrent chest discomfort. Thank you.